hello good morning to all of you so uh, we are now discussing uh, about the basis sets and basis set uh, uh, last uh, two three lectures we have defined the what is the basis set and uh, what are the type of basis set and their advantage and disadvantage also okay so now in this lecture we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, discuss little more about basis set and uh, the, what is the type of nomenclature and uh, how many basis functions are available in a particular basis set we'll discuss in this uh, lecture okay so type of basis set uh, single zeta multiple zeta and split balance basis set so this type of uh, basis set you will uh, you will use uh, during your calculations and you will see if you uh, read any literature about computational chemistry that somebody can uh, say that i have used double zeta basis set or i have used single zeta basis set or i have used triple zeta basis set or somebody can say that I have a split balance triple zeta basis set. So we have to understand why uh, R actually implies this zeta and what are uh, the uh, name actually uh, defines the uh, split balance like that. So, okay. So as when we are defining the STO uh, 3G basis set, we have said this is a minimal basis set, means that uh, it's called single zeta. So this nomenclature actually comes from uh, the idea that uh, only one basis functions will be used for to express one orbital okay so for a single zeta basis set you will use only one basis functions for per each orbital okay so for uh, let's take the example that for hydrogen and helium you have only one s orbital there so uh, only one basis functions will be involved for hydrogen and helium in case of sto 3g basis set okay <coughs> for lithium to neon you will have five basis functions because there are five orbitals uh, because it's a uh, 1s and 2s and 3 2p orbital for sodium to argon uh, this is a th series three uh, elements so it has uh, up to uh, second row set so you have to add the total nine functions because you are three is three p o x three p o y three p z also you have to incorporate so a basis set with two basis functions uh, for each atomic orbital is called double zeta basis and same way we can explain that in triple zeta basis there are uh, functions for each uh, uh, three basis functions will be used for each atomic orbital okay you could use uh, more and more basis functions for orbital and that will uh, define you the multiple zeta basis set and maybe your calculations will be more accurate also but the time uh, computational time will be higher okay now the split valence basis set what is the split valence basis set you know uh, in your chemical intuition <coughs> that during the chemical reactions the core orbitals become almost intact they have no role in the chemical bonding or in chemical reactions anything only the valence bond actually valence orbitals plays the uh, role in chemical reactions so what we can uh, do one thing is that uh, we can uh, keep the uh, <coughs> core orbitals uh, we can define core orbitals uh, not so explicitly but we can define valence uh, basis functions valence orbitals more uh, using more and more basis functions so that will uh, help you to uh, get accurate results with less computational time so what we can do here we can uh, we will increase the uh, flexibility in the valence basis functions compared to core that can be more effective okay so this phenomenon led to the development of uh, the split valence basis set or balanced multiple zeta basis set means we will fix the core uh, by using some basis functions and we will split the uh, uh, valence cell by few uh, more basis functions okay so here we can uh, define the split valence basis set so the most popular split split valence basis set are developed by popel and his co-workers the basis set related information that is contraction pattern number of basis functions and number of primitive gaussians are all are included in the name of the basis function okay so popel defined the basis functions uh, in this way that split valence basis set so uh, let's define what is the what is the meaning of this uh, like 631g 
so G stands for Gaussian so we are using Gaussian type of basis functions this 6 is actually uh, the core orbital so uh, we have the number of uh, Gaussian function used to define core orbitals so 6 primitive Gaussians are used for core orbital and your valence cell you can see these are uh, splitted by two uh, functions that is the one is 3 and one is 1 this 3 means that three primitive Gaussians are used for this basis functions and uh, this one means the one num only one uh, Gaussian is used for this basis function okay so total how many basis functions will be there here uh, the basis functions will be uh, we'll discuss in the uh, next slide so uh, <coughs> So here split valence triple zeta means that our core is one only intact uh, that is the it's defined by uh, six Gaussian functions but our, now we have uh, splitted our valence uh, basis set valence uh, cell by uh, three okay so the first uh, the number of Gaussian functions used to define the first STO that is the three three uh, Gaussian is used to uh, define the first STO type of vitals and uh, this is uh, defined one Gaussian will used uh, for second STO this is the third Gaussian used for STO uh, so, uh, sorry one Gaussian is used for to define the third STO so here you can see again that six is uh, this is for core which is say six Gaussian and our uh, balance is splitted by three okay so there are three term three one one okay so now we'll define how uh, we can calculate the number of basis functions so let's uh, take the sto 3g uh, that is the minimal basis set first so in case of minimal basis set what uh, we have uh, here for hydrogen and helium uh, they have only one s orbital so only one functions will be used for lithium to uh, neon this is the second uh, series of the elements so you will have the valence cell up to 2s2 uh, so 1 is 2s 2p uh, 2s and 3 2p orbital so total 5 functions but for uh, sodium to argon they have uh, uh, 3 uh, total 9 functions that 1 is and uh, 2s 2p uh, uh, 2s and 3 2p uh, 2p orbital and 3s and 3 3p orbital total 9 functions so in this way we can extend our uh, basis functions using uh, when we will go uh, uh, below the periodic table so if the number of orbitals will increase your basis functions will have to increase because we will use uh, one basis functions per each orbital okay so uh, these are all actually given more carefully in the book of Erol, uh, Erol G. Lewis computational chemistry book that has uh, discussed so in 3 to 1 G basis set here how many uh, basis functions will be used let's say for hydrogen atom hydrogen atom has one s orbital and it is also the valence orbital so this valence orbital will be splitted by two so this is uh, total two functions will be there because valence cell uh, will be split by two okay so my means that per uh, each valence orbital will have the two atomic uh, two basis functions for that helium also will have two whereas uh, uh, lithium to neon where core and valence orbital is first different because one s is the core orbital and two s two and three two p orbitals are the valence orbital so for one s you will have the one function and for the valence orbital you have uh, each for each valence orbital you will have two functions so for the two s prime two p prime two p prime and two p prime you have said here and also there are another uh, series of functions you need for because 2s double prime 2p double prime 2p double prime 2p double prime so total eight functions because you have four valence orbital as it's uh, splitted uh, by double zeta uh, so you have to take uh, two uh, 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 valence basis functions for each orbital so we have more total eight we have take uh, total eight valence basis functions and one core basis function so total nine functions in this way we can calculate for uh, sodium to argon we have will have 13 basis functions so it's very important uh, you can ca calculate the basis functions for any of the uh, this purple type of split valence type of basis function and you can see when basis functions will increase your uh, computational time will increase so you can uh, see that when we'll go below to the periodic table our atomic number increases means the number of orbital increases means that our computational time will be very very uh, will uh, be uh, started increasing okay so one more things do not be confused with the basis functions and the primitive Gaussian so let's take the example of lithium to neon for this 3 to 1 G basis set 
okay so here basis functions uh, for core only one and for balance it will be splitted by two so it will be total eight so total nine functions but the primitive gaussians how many primitive gaussians will be there that is for that we can define by this is for core so three gaussian uh, for co for core so for lithium we have three primitive gaussians for core and uh, first uh, for the first series of valence uh, cell that will have the part or, or orbital has you have two uh, primitive gaussians so four into two so we'll have four uh, total eight uh, primitive gaussians for this series and also in the last uh, uh, basis functions uh, this uh, last series of basis functions what do you need you need one gaussian per each orbital so you will have 1 into 4 so total basis function is 3 plus 2 into 4 mean 8 3 plus 8 plus 1 into 4 means 4 so 3 plus 8 plus 4 means total 15 primitive primitive gaussians so in this set in this basis set sto 321g basis set for the lithium to so neon atom we have nine functions but 15 primitive gaussians okay so be careful on that that what uh, we if in the questions they are asking for primitive gaussians then you have to consider the explicit number that three two one how many are there and uh, you can uh, do calculate the th primitive gaussians for all other uh, atoms also here and you can get the calculations from this book also and when you will uh, uh, compute uh, you will uh, perform in the lab then also you will uh, see that the your program will print when you will uh, use 3 to 1 g basis set for these atom calculations you will see that your program will uh, print that how many basis functions are there and how many primitive questions are there okay so in uh, next class we will uh, discuss a few little more things about the basis sets and then it will be completed and we will go to the post hartree method means that when we will uh, incorporate the electron correlation terms okay so thank you very much mm -hmm.